the day after, the violent night before, and the scale of what may be ahead dawned on Donetsk. This is what a bomb did when it didn't detonate. This when it did. We think here they were from a jet, we heard. While nobody was killed near these garages, the hope the heaviest weapons wouldn't be used in this fight died. Closer to the city centre, one man was killed here, waiting for a tram. Someone posting a parody of the Ukrainian anthem. Ukraine isn't dead yet, it says, but it already smells and we can see its end. Just around the corner, another man died from shelling. Places like here, that these shells land, and while both sides blame the other for the loss of civilian lives, it's almost impossible in places like this, markets, homes all around, that the fight for Donetsk will happen without a lot of innocent Ukrainians losing their lives. Who fired these shells, separatists or Ukrainians, was the question nobody could answer as they queued to get out late pensions. That's the interesting question. One woman says they don't advertise who does it. It's hard to tell. In the city centre, too, the remains of a night gun battle we heard. Unclear who was fighting so hard to control this local government finance building. A rare appearance from a separatist leader tried to bolster morale, but did not explicitly appeal for Russian military help. We're hearing now the Ukrainian army advancing every hour. We hear explosions in the town as we speak. How can you win without Russian help? We think we're holding out OK, he says. For over 100 days, the entire war machine of a state has been crashing down on our young republic of Novorossiya. If they lose part of the territory, they are defeated. And this is a huge victory. And we think we have this victory as Ukrainian society doesn't want to fight. But outside, in the blue, another Ukrainian jet flew overhead. The sky is starting to fall in on this uprising, as the moment for Russia to bail out the rebellion it started seems about to pass.